Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And today we are going to teach you everything that I know and everything that you should know about hunting in moccasins. And why are moccasins even important? Because if you are going to be spot and stock hunting for big game, they are going to help keep your footsteps quiet. And why that is, is because if you're talking about walking around in a big hunting boot that has a very rigid, hard sole made of rubber, and as you're walking, it indiscriminately crunches everything that you step on, even if you step really slow and quiet. But with a moccasin, it's quite cushioned, and you can feel things like sticks underneath your feet, or things like this that when you step on them, and they make that noise, you can feel that, stop yourself from putting down the pressure, or simply go straight from your heel to your toe with your pressure and walk right over top of that stick. Now, I pretty much exclusively hunt in moccasins. Now, I'm gonna go through several of the things that are important about moccasin care and using throughout the hunt. And also, if you're interested in these moccasins, I've got several different pairs, and they all come from Moccasins Canada. And this is a brand new pair that they just sent me. And this is one of my older pair. And I've got several of these. And I think I've tested out several of their models now. And I mean really put them through the ringer. And I have yet to wear out a single pair of moccasins. And I've been hunting in them for years. Now, if you're going to be walking on pavement with them, then you need something that has a rubber sole. But when you're talking about exclusively hunting or spending time in the woods, in the outdoors, you're looking for the leather sole on them. And a lot of them just are, there's nothing on the inside of these, there's, there's no structure, there's no plastic plate or cushion. This is straight leather and then this has a thicker oil uh, tanned leather sole at the bottom. That's why it's a different color, it's not rubber, it's actually just thicker moose hide leather. These are ones, actually these are ones that I had custom made that are, have no sole whatsoever. It is nothing but a thin layer of leather and unfortunately you can't get these. I had to custom order this. Um, but they have ones that look just like these but they have the same leather sole on it. And most people want these anyway. My feet are pretty tough. I can step on a lot of sharp stuff and this just offers minimal protection for me. But your average person this is what you want is this this light or this heavier tanned Soul. Try to stay away from all the rubber compounds, that kind of stuff that, that is a little bit noisier. Now one of the things that's really important about it is if they're really built out or they have a lot of insulation, you're increasing your footprint size and that's also quite noisy. So what the idea here is you want to wear these essentially like a pair of socks. You want them to wrap around your feet. You don't want them loose flopping around. They should fit you tight. So they recommend, and so do I, that say if you normally wear a 10 and a half in a shoe size, order a 10. Or if you order a 10, order a 10. But if you, if you wear a 10 and it fits a little bit loose, order a 9. But they only come in whole sizes. But you want to downsize because remember it's leather, so it's going to stretch, especially the more that you wear it and work it into shape. But you want them, you don't want them to fit super tight, but you don't want them really loose flopping around on you either. So, now I've got this brand new pair, they just came in, and we're fixing to get them dirty, because I don't wear them out on the town to go party, and I wear these things hunting. And one of the first things I do when I get a pair is I've got a pot here, and I've got, uh, this is bear grease and uh, beeswax that I've melted down in that pot. And I like to go ahead, and I mean really massage these in, this, uh, this oil. Now, if you don't have your own bear grease and or mink oil or any of that kind of stuff you can get a product from them as well it's called rain and snow which is a wax oil waterproofing and it's just a refined version and it works actually just as well but since i've got the the real primitive stuff i like to use that and what you want to do is soak this leather as much as you can and then actually leave it out in the sun and get it hot so it kind of melts itself down in and you're going to want to really fill all of these seams. So all of the stitched seams you want to fill. Now you'll never completely fill them up, but the idea is once you fill these on both shoes, every seam, you don't just set them up. Now you go abuse them and you pound dirt and 
sand and whatever not and it's going to mix with that and it's going to start filling in a lot of the little holes that make these leak now when people say are, are moccasins waterproof are they you know how do you how do you waterproof them this all this does is make them somewhat water resistant so immediately after oiling they're actually quite waterproof and I did a test on that where I can stand in puddles and keep my feet dry oddly enough because they're very freshly oiled now as this continues to dry out even over a period of a couple days you'll notice that they'll start leaking and your feet get wet so after several years of testing especially here down in South Florida where it's seemingly always wet what I do is I don't just rely on having one pair of moccasins. I have at least two pair with me. I always typically travel with three, but that's because I have extras. But I always have two pair. And I wear one pair in the morning when the grass is wet, and I'm not worried about getting them wet. It doesn't bother me in the least. What happens is if you, if you wear it with a sock, the sock sucks up moisture, and that's what's really squishy and irritable. It's, it's annoying to walk around essentially in wet socks. But if your moccasin gets wet and you don't have any socks on, then all it is is standing on wet leather and it doesn't bother you, but it still protects you from the extra sharp stuff. Now this isn't going to stop like, you know, big huge cactus spines, so you still have to pay attention where you're going. You know, it's not going to stop a snake bite or any of that, but it's going to stop all the little extra pricklies and pokies. They're going to get you and slow you down or, or stick in your foot and bother you while you're actually making a stalk. And so wear that pair and get them wet but wear them again without socks now if you train your feet to wear these on a regular basis you'll also find out that you can wear them in snow with either no socks or a very light sock and your feet will actually stay quite warm so it's interesting when i've gone and hunted say like in idaho and walking around through the mountains and there's snow on the ground everybody thought that i was nuts but my feet weren't really cold at all and my moccasins were absolutely soaked but i did have a wool sock on and we should you know always point out that wool does so much better at keeping your warm even when it's wet but that's because i am also acclimated to colder weather and wearing moccasins i don't find them slippery at the bottom if you wear them and hunt with them all the time you learn to walk in them will you fall down sure but you can fall down wearing boots. I've seen that, you know, people take big old nosedives wearing big lugged hunting boots. So it's unlike anything else. In fact, this gives me a better contact surface with the ground where I can use my toes to grip. So it might take you a little bit of practice to get used to it. It might take you a little while to acclimate your feet to not being cold sensitive. Uh, but if you're spot and stalking, moccasins are really the way to go and again if you want to see exactly what these are they're from moccasins canada i'm going to put a link down to both both these two different styles and you can go check them out and see which ones you think you like better but realistically they're going to perform exactly the same but the reason that i really like these moccasins again is because they're not filled with padding and stiffening things that are going to take away the feel and the connectivity that I have with the ground. So anyway, now if I get back to the fact that I was making a minute ago where I'm going to hunt in a pair in the morning and I'm not afraid to get them wet. I will get them absolutely soaking wet. It does not hurt these moccasins. I know that they're not specifically made for that, but that's the only reason for me, honestly, to own these other than they look good, but I'm a use kind of guy. So I'm going to go out and get these things absolutely soaking wet. And then when I come back, I take them soaking wet and I lay them in the sun to dry. And then I'll go ahead and put on my dry ones and I can continue to hunt in the afternoon or the evening time when it's not wet. And then when I come back before the dew sets, I'll pull these back into my camp and they'll usually be good and dry and I'll put them back on and I can hunt again in the morning with them. So I always have two pairs, a morning set and an evening set, and typically I don't have any problems with at all. Like I said, I've had these ones soaked more times than I can count, and they're still as strong as they can be. And in fact, I kind of think it actually helps them to get soaked 
because as they start to loosen up and get a little bit sloppy feeling on you when you get them soaked and you dry them in the sun, they actually shrink up a little bit so they feel a little bit better on my feet. They fit a little bit tighter and therefore I can walk a little bit quieter. So anyway, check them out, moccasinscanada.com. You can also pick them up on my site, huntprimitive.com. That's perfectly fine too. If you're, if you're placing an order with me for bows, arrows, atlatls, quivers, stone points, any of that stuff, then you want to add these into the cart and get them too. That's perfectly fine, but they actually will still ship from Moccasins Canada. So don't be afraid to just head on over and just buy them straight from there if that's your only um, if that's the only thing that you're going to purchase, just go straight to Moccasin Canada and get them because you'll actually get them a day or two faster because by the time I process them through my site and then send it to them, so you, you understand. So anyway, we're fixing to do a midday walk through the, oh, the, the dark swampy woods looking for some pigs. So I got to get my atlatl. I'm going to put my new ones on. I'm fixing to get these things just oiled them. So that's why I'm going to go out and get them dirty right now so i always think they look better when they have a little age on them anyway don't you i do so anyway thanks for following along hope you enjoy the moccasin information and we'll catch you on the next adventure